Hello, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this lab we're going to be taking a look at quality of service, otherwise known as QoS. Specifically within QoS, we are going to be focusing on traffic policing in this lab. What we're going to do is we are going to show you the basics of traffic policing, how it is applied and configured on a router, how you can check to see that your traffic policing is actually working correctly, And we are also going to explain the main difference between traffic policing and traffic shaping and show you that on the router. So in this case, in this lab, we have three routers, router 1, router 2, and router 3. We're going to be performing traffic policing on router 1, both on both its serial interfaces, so serial 00, zero going to router 2 and serial 0, 01 going to router 3. So we have the connection between router 1 and router 2 is using the 172.16.12.0/24 network and the connection between router 1 and router 3 is using the 172.16.13.0/24 network. We have two loopback interfaces on router 1. We have loopback 0, which is 1.1.1.1, or 1.1.1.0 slash 24, and also we have loopback 1, which is 11.11.11.0 slash 24. On router 2, we have a loopback 0, which is 2.2.2.0 slash 24, and on router 3, we have a loopback 0, which is 3.3.3.0 slash 24. So again, we are going to be configuring traffic policing. Again, this implementation of traffic policing is going to be what's known as class-based traffic policing. And what traffic policing allows us to do is to monitor traffic specified by the class map and applies a particular speed limit in which to send this traffic. And then we are going to specify actions to take actions known as the conform action which specifies what traffic should do what traffic should do that meets this limit and then we also have an exceed action which specifies what traffic should do that exceeds the limit specified So one of the key differences between traffic policing and traffic shaping is that there is no option to buffer the packet and send it out later with traffic policing like there is in traffic shaping. So again with traffic shaping where you can buffer traffic and burst the traffic if all the traffic is not used in a specific time interval you can send excess burst traffic with traffic shaping. However, with traffic policing, you cannot do that. Traffic is policed or limited to a certain amount. Once it reaches that limit, then you perform your actions. So we're going to take a look at a couple of things that we can do with those actions. What we're going to do is we are going to again set up two policy maps on router 1. So let's go ahead and get started. On router 1, router 2, and router 3, they're all in the OSPF 1, running the OSPF 1 process.